Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the High School Sports Beat brought to you by Alfred State College. I'm Dave Yates. It's time now for the High School Notebook brought to you by Duncan. America runs on Duncan. And joining us again this week, we are happy to have Matt Trable. Thanks for having me. Matt, we're going to talk a little puck right now. Some guys from Section 5 who are making some big names for themselves. Absolutely. A couple big names, especially recently with the news. The Hobie Baker Award was the national MVP for college puck. That came out with its 2020 finalists recently. Not one, but two Rochesterians on that list. First off, we should talk about a kid from Providence, a sophomore there. He won a state championship with McQuaid. It's Jack Dugan. He was drafted pretty recently by the Vegas Golden Knights. He, and this is an absurd stat, especially coming from a pretty good area for hockey with the Giantas coming from here as well. He is number one nationally in both assists and points, even better there. So this kid is looked at really by a lot of national experts as a top two candidate to win the whole thing, not just being a finalist. Dryden McKay, who is the Minnesota State starting goalkeeper, that's the other guy kind of going toe to toe with him. So it'll be fun to see what happens there. But going back to the finalist list, David Ferentz, a name I think more people might know because he played more recently here. Before Victor was one of those blue devils that was such a star as an underclassman before he went to go play juniors. He is 12th nationally in points. He's a Boston University sophomore. He's a Boston University junior, I should say. And then on top of that, number one nationally in power play goals. So this kid is very good as well, also on that Hobie Baker finalist list. And then just kind of continuing the trend, not in the Hobie Baker list, but a couple days before that Hobie Baker news comes out, you have Nate Soucy, a Fairport native. He becomes the Penn State program historic leader in terms of scoring. That's a big deal because they've really been picking it up with Pagula Arena. They have been a top 10 team all season long. He's currently leading that team in goal scoring. Those guys making Rochester proud. Yeah, it's awesome to see. Talking about making Rochester proud, let's wrap things up <laughs> with a little talk about the wrap and some of the some of the great games that were in that tournament. Yeah, that wrap invitational showcase, which has been going on for around a half decade now at East High School, it's put on by Phil Valenti from Valenti Sports. It never disappoints. This year was no different. The crowds were huge, especially for the two primetime games of the five at the end of the night. You really have to love seeing kind of Rochester kind of come out as a whole. You had players from all different sorts of teams coming out and their parents and all that kind of stuff. But the premier matchup, I would say, between Section 5 foes was a rematch of an overtime thriller that we were talking about on the show a couple weeks ago. Leadership in that one, one in overtime by two over U Prep. They played again, stoic point guard for leadership. Mo McKinney and his Lions, they won for a second time this season against those Griffins, this time in regulation by one point, down to the wire yet again. Shamir McCullough, one of his backcourt mates, he had a big three late in that one to kind of seal the deal. They had some free throws after that. And then I would say the best game maybe overall, even though there was involving a Section 6 team, it was the host Eagles taking on Buffalo Powerhouse Park School. In that one, you had Kaori Barley in overtime. He's one of the two head coaches' sons that start in that backcourt for them. He had five points, the leading score in that OT period. That was big for them. They got John Oregon, a 6'10", future D1 center for the Pioneers. They got him in foul trouble all game long. They're able to win that game, a statement win for the entire state. And then you throw in Aquinas. Earlier in the night, they continued their rise. They beat by laps, lopsided fashion a Northeast Douglas team, which is pretty good, has some good talent back. And Jack Blyer and Jack Scanlon combined for eight threes in that one. And the younger Scanlon brother, who's really just getting some minutes now, he had his breakout game. Will Scanlon, the freshman, you got to love to see it. It seems like every week there are great showdowns going, coming, going on all over the place. And with sectionals coming up, that's always good to see. We're back with more of the High School Sports Beat brought to you by Alfred State College right after this.